it's Wednesday on Your View. Welcome to the show. I am Mariah Afolabi Brown. As always, I never do this alone. I have the ladies. Hello. Hi. Is Obi here? I can't see you. I can't see you. We have a tall top. Tall top of cakes and cream today. Thanks. I mean, this is a really nice cake. Too. Yeah. I mean, they, they really, really went, went all, out. all out to get this nice tall cake. How are you doing, Bajulu? I'm good. So um, on my way to work this morning, because I usually leave the house about 5 a.m., just coming out of my junction, a bus with no sign that he was going to stop stopped in front of me and was picking passengers for over seven minutes. What? Oh, wow. No trafficator. I, I, imagine no hazard, if I hadn't given on. him space. I would have just run into him right. that early. He didn't listen to me. He just kept on picking passengers till he was done. So that, you know, that, that alone was enough for me to fight that morning. So I wanted, I turned very close to him. I wanted to wind down my glass to Tell give him, him <laughs> as in give him a piece of my mind. Oh, but then I wound down the wrong glass. Oh, sugar. <laughs> <laughs> I just uh, moved on. How anticlimactic. I'm sure God is telling me, no, don't fight this money. It's too early. And yeah, they can push you, yeah, those people. I mean, we like, have to just consider I mean, in Nigeria, as well. see, when I When I drive in Lagos, I look at everybody's faces and I see how frustrated all of us look. I'm telling you. Oh, behind the steering wheel, like, we all look just terribly frustrated. <laughs> so I'm there thinking, why do we all look this way? Because we're we we already thinking, okay, this guy's going to stop. Yeah. That's going to turn like yeah. this. You know, we are, I mean, our minds are not at rest. <laughs> how are you doing, Jare Nima? Okay, Maybe not even ask you because today no, is your show. Today, I, today, <laughs> today I, your defied the, I defied all the odds. Mm. I made it, so I'm grateful. Mm. But I wanted to mention yesterday, if I had come in early, that you know that we were mourning as Muslims because as a young girl, there was a publisher whose books I read and they formed me. His name was uh, Mud uh, Mud uh, Olani Mudathi Olani. Uh, um, Sanusi, he was the publisher of the Dean Digest. These books were the right Muslim books that every knowledge seeking, you don't have to be a, an Arabic expert. You would read them and they would f give you the right information about the religion. He published uh, Anasia, Dean Digest, all these books I read, all the mag I subscribed even through school. Wow. And they really helped. And these days we just see people just, everybody just publishing you know, some things. He died a simple person and he had touched a lot of lives. Mm. And you know, Mm. I never met him. That's just the painful part. Because oh. a lot of people were not saying, I met him once, oh, it was painful, oh. but somebody with such knowledge. Okay, he's so rest, in, so peace. rest in, in peace. How are you doing? Fine, thank you. So in that no, on that note, I think we should um, we send our, uh, our hearts goes yes. out to the people who, the victims of yesterday's fire. Yeah. I mean, mm. so many people lost properties oh, worth millions and millions of Naira. Mm. So, you know, our hearts go out to you and... Sometimes it's really tough being a Nigerian, oh, you know, because you. I'm looking at it. Is there going to? There's no insurance. Definitely, insurance. it took a while for fire service to Two get there. Afterwards. You know, so my heart just goes out. To, I had another story to say, but when I saw this, I said we just need to just. Very painful. You yeah, know. I mean, I'm here to get in report because that's like my village. Oh. Pretty practically, yeah, that's, Balogun, village. that's where my oh. family is from. Yeah, so the mm. are I need about to. You this morning. Have you seen the Guardian? I've not seen the Guardian, oh. but um, but I know it's it's, it's all. It's all crazy. So I've not even heard, I've not gotten calls from family. I don't know what's mm. going on. So I don't know. I hope nobody that I know, mm. I mean, uh, lost any affected. lives or properties in this <laughs> fire. Yeah. Okay, let's go on a quick break. When we come back, we'll go through the front pages of the newspaper. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Right. So now that I've seen the front page of Guardian, I think mm. I'll get to Guardian earlier. You took that story. <laughs> okay. I will definitely get to Guardian today. What does it say? It Should says we just start that, with? Let's start with Guardian. Since okay. Nima has brought our attention to the ah, Guardian. Okay. okay. How rising seas may wipe off Lagos Maybe. and others by 2050. Mm. Nima, you better have that story. <laughs> Senate confirms Odubu. Okumagba as NDDC Chairman MD, Pinik Akimomi Diko, others cleared for graft charges, or should to move from civil service states to regional commercial hub. And uh, Akwaibo University sacks eight teachers for alleged sexual harassment extortion. Okay, Nima, what's going on? Okay, so according to this research by, done by the Climate Central, a science organization based in New Jersey, um, coastal cities, not only Lagos, so, but Lagos warning was for the 2050. 
would be, you know, of course, buried. And they did a rating is based on cities. It's not about the Okay, don't plan. <laughs> That's the legal. Because I, I wonder I if have, I, any more will just, read this and they won't be worried. So you guys can come. You okay, see, so those of you who have home to go to. What, what people so now, most of these areas that get flooded annually by rain mm -hmm. would eventually be, is because of the coastal yeah. areas, you know, getting underwater yeah. more and more by, 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 uh, per year. And you eventually you know, be buried under the water eventually. So this is a warning by this um, uh, research institute, and it's something that should worry every home. Everybody. Reading it, me, I'm just afraid because we're very close to the lagoon again. Wow. Yeah. And all that our government is thinking is commercializing that coastal area rather than help, you know, mm. the properties yeah. around there. I mean, it's, over centuries, many cities have gone underwater and mm. things like that, and I know so that Japan major one in China is something that, yes. Happening right so we now. need to... Take better, make better policies mm -hmm. for the city of Lagos. But if you don't make better policies, I invite you. That's the Jersey rehabilitation is back to sender. Right. Well, 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 moving on to the nation. <laughs> Let's go to the nation. Buhari can rule Nigeria from anywhere, says Oshomole. Mm -hmm. Minister orders cut of data rate. Millions gone in Lagos market fire. Cut halts operation show ID. Makinde to demolish illegal rehab center. EFCC Mina will jump bill if granted. Okay, let's not take a shameli yet. Okay, okay can we take mine? Let's Mayna. take Mina. Mina. So, um, Mina has asked for uh, for bail mm -hmm. and on the grounds of ill health, but the EFCC is saying that see, this man is not a responsible citizen. He's a fugitive mm -hmm. of the law. He's a U.S. citizen and also naturalized resident of UAE. So, and he has money and resources available to him. So this is someone that is very likely to jump bail. And uh, the sort of <coughs> offense that he has committed, which is he's stolen um, three billion of pensioners' monies. And this, um, this particular, what, he, what he's facing does not give room for any fine yeah, or other non Yes, yeah. so he has to, to be do. kept in jail, yeah, remanded in prison for this. Based on records. <clears throat> okay, so moving on. State here. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, the governor of um, or your state, uh, Governor Sheyi Makinde, uh, I think on Monday they were able to get about 259 detainees from an illegal rehabilitation center. And um, though, though they've put them somewhere that those ones can uh, could recuperate, about 25 of them are taking... Um, they are in the hospitals now receiving treatments. So he's saying that the building, that massive structure, the mosque itself, mm -hmm. will be demolished and all the teachers involved will be prosecuted. He also said something that they've always had neighbors, that people who live around the area, that if people would have, you know, put themselves in the position of those ones receiving those... Um, Treatment. treatment and reported the cases. It wouldn't have lingered Why for so long. So we should, mask, we should be. Oh, it, no, he's, actually... he's saying that we shouldn't use the name of religion to perpetrate exactly. crime. So let's not. So it's a criminal it. offense. It is. Batching no, people agree. in. Prosecute them, but the, yeah. the, the structure itself is a mosque. Why would you demolish a mosque? I don't know. I don't that's know. what he's. Okay, saying. and then I okay, just wanted to quickly add that when he talked about neighbors who would have seen this happen. Yeah. The thing is, we need to understand that these things were legal at one point in time. It's they just were not legal. legal. They, were, oh, they were acceptable. Were, uh, mm -hmm. uh -huh. They were accepted. So it's not until legal. now that, yeah, so that they were not in hiding in the first place. Mm -hmm. just that they were acceptable. OK, the punch, signing of bill in UK. Nigerians attack Buhari. Picture here, fire guards, Lagos factory, Balogu, the Sumo market sibling, uh, and some buildings. Grieving husband dies 24 hours after wife's demise. Makinde inaugurates wife as HIV board chair. Senate confirms NDDC board members reject Akwabio panel. No going back, Edo 14, lawmakers tell Obaseki. Labor rights states set for minimum wage negotiations. Um, corruption persists despite Buhari's efforts, says SGF Sage. License cancellation, FG gives discourse December 7th deadline. Okay, let's talk about the Nigerian attacking Buhari for this. So, well, he sign, uh, yeah, Mr. Ahead. President signed the deep offshore and inland basin production sharing contract over there <coughs> in London. So um, Nigerians, of course, had a problem with it. I personally think that if we do not understand how democracy is run, mm. we should not adopt it as a system of government. Mm. When we have a vice president in Nigeria and we have to fly with taxpayers' money. It was a, a private bill. visit. It was, a it was a private visit. Ah, Let me much, much. But he... Our president... <laughs> Our president, of course, at about a few weeks back, I think two, mm. three, two, three weeks back, was talking about cutting the cost of governance. Right, yeah. And if the chief of staff would have to take a bill mm. all the way there to the president in, in the Queen's country, 
Mm. Did you see Macron? What's their name? The, mm. the president again? Elizabeth and the other Any one. of them, of those U European presidents, ever do such a thing in Nigeria? Trump. We are a sovereign nation, and the dignity with which we want to be addressed, we must, we must first carry ourselves with that. I do not see anything wrong with it. Legally, with the constitution has allowed, it's only until 21 days yeah, that he yeah, needs to days. hand over. But then, you should just look at the way, he, the, the image he gives us. What it symbolizes. Has responded. Mm -hmm. has said that he can preside over Nigeria anywhere yeah. from the world, anywhere he is yeah, in the world. And that because he's, he, yes, you are, he agrees that Nigeria is a sovereign mm -hmm. state, but wherever our presence is, that's where we can, can do actually his job. Do his job how the people would feel. The yeah, so that's, is... that's the apparent position, saying that it seems as though our vice president is being sidelined, mm -hmm. or like he doesn't have any portfolio. It doesn't now, seem this can, is I, a fact. Yeah, but now, it's, I don't want, do you want us to continue know. that? Do you, do you feel that it's something that we need to continue to latch on the fact that our vice mm -hmm. president, who has actually come out himself, right. to yeah. say yeah. that yeah. these are, there's nothing going, going on. Yeah. May I quickly remind Nigerians that the VP is not an appointee of the president. He was elected. By Nigerians. Position. So it also has, this is the constitutional office that we have empowered as, right. ourselves. It must be allowed to operate. Something will be happening there. They need to sort themselves out. Yeah. All right. Okay. So let's move on. Let's talk about the human interest story. Go yes. Ahead. So this, um, this particular woman, Chibuzo Balogun, and Isolo, Lagos State, uh, was diagnosed of cholera, she was tooling. According to the story, she had loose tools, she was vomiting, and then she died. Only 24 hours later, the husband died as well, leaving four children. The oldest is 14, the youngest is two years old. They don't know where to go from there. Mm. So I think we should look yeah, into we it. Yeah, look into it, how especially as they said that it may have been cholera. cholera. So the government officials went to that building and noticed the state of sanitation in that particular compound. So if there's an outbreak of cholera, we need to know about the, it. The, so but the, I think take. Lagos, on the Tribune online, yeah. in, I read about um, um, a gastro, something, something infection that was, of course, in, um, in Lagos now. Okay. So, I think it should be investigated so that we we'll know if it's that yeah, uh, strain. And the doctors. All right, moving on to daily son. Court stops to operation. To positive identification. Millions of naira lost as fire raises Balogu market. Mm -hmm. Traditional ruler flees Edo community as angry youths raise palace. Minimum wage labor sets December 31st deadline for negotiations with governors. Masop asks South East governors to honor Ojuku. Okay, let's talk about the minimum wage. Who has that story? Yes, so I have the minimum wage. Dave, um, organized labor has given December 31st deadline to governors to implement the minimum wage. The uh, federal uh, part of it, they've already signed. They are good to go. But then the negotiations for the consequential adjustment is still ongoing within the states. But two states had already started paying, Kaduna and KB. Mm -hmm. So labor is saying that they have to go back to the drawing board and renegotiate with the state, saying that there is no excuse for any state who is not ready to pay will likely be impeached. And the fire in Lagos, who has hmm. a story? Yeah. Mary, so, ma'am? Ma'am, go ahead. Okay, so um, this particular factory in Balugu Market, this Das Carlos Van Dos Ventures. It's mm. a building. It's a chin chin factory, and it caught fire. No one, as of the time of this report, is able to tell us what may have caused the fire. Also but that, uh, but a lot of us know how Balogu Market is. So it chin talked chin. about how it was hard for fire service to mm. get there. You know, the emergency services, but they did. And I saw on 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 TV yesterday. It looked quite, you know. Um, they had the fire service people on really high cranes over the fire, but I think it took them. It started the fire started at 7:30. At 10 p.m., they were still the, trying the, to. The, the efforts of the fire, the fire service out. were also slowed down by the activities of people struggling to save goods. Yeah. Mm. And Nigerians, you know, usually some people stealing as well, going into yeah, shops in, in a burning building trying yeah. to take properties. We can't but take any more stories. No, that's no, may I quickly say that yeah. the Balogun market, ex the entire Mandela's and everything, was imitated at the trade fair. That complex built for trade fair activity mm. was converted into a market to reduce mm. the congestions on the island. But what is happening there now? But what is happening there now is exactly the old order in the Balogun market. And we, it just lacks, it just shows that our government lacks vision on what exactly yes. to do to prevent things like this. Lagos is like disaster by turn by turn waiting to happen. Yeah. All the buildings are actually clustered yeah. together. We have they the are depot, so close, everything. Needed, such that for failing. There's no way that the fire goes on to have the ripple effect on all for these buildings. To put down, uh, okay, no unfortunately, down. we can't take any more papers. We have so much to cover today. We have to go on a break. Now, when we come back, we have an appearance from Wimbiz. Stay mm -hmm. with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back.
Welcome back to Your View. So joining us on the show is the chairperson Wimbi's Women in Management, Business and Public Service, Olubumi Abodering Talabi. Welcome to the show, madam. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Good morning. So Wimbi's is having their annual conference. Yes, Could you tell are. us what, what's this year's theme about? Okay, so uh, good morning, everyone. Um, so tomorrow we start the 18th Wimbi's mm -hmm. annual conference. And the theme for this year is Shaping the Future, Strategizing to Win. Mm. The idea is let's be more tactical mm -hmm. in our approach and let's be more deliberate, more intentional about achieving the goals that we want to achieve. Many of us have dreams, we have desires, we have objects, things that we want to achieve, but how do we get there? The idea is come to the Wimbers Annual Conference, listen to various speakers who will talk about things like understanding consumer behavior, how to read retail maths. This is good for people who are in business, but then for people who are in um, uh, management or in the corporate sphere, we have things like negotiation. Yes, that's what I'm worth. To talk about how you can talk about getting a pay rise mm. without coming across as offensive or over the right. top, but mm. you know I what you're worth. Know how to do that. Trust and, me. And, and so on and so forth. And we also have things on retirement planning. Mm. It's never too early to start thinking about your future. Mm -hmm. So we have people to come and talk to us about tax planning, retirement planning, financial planning, and so on and so, so forth. So I've heard that the Wimby's target only women, that the audience is largely women alone. Is that a fact? It is, because Wimby's is actually women in management, business, and public service. So it's an organization dedicated to, to helping women. Mm -hmm. However, what we've noticed is that more and more men are starting to attend mm -hmm. our, our events. There's a campus program that we run called WIWIC, Winning Without Compromise. And mm -hmm. originally, WIWIC was envisioned for female students. But last year, University of Joss, we had almost 50-50 split, mm -hmm. male students and, and, and female. And it was one of the largest um, crowds that we've ever had for WIWIC. So more men are paying attention to what, ha what is happening at Wimbis. So you have um, uh, some tips for people who come, like your delegates. Do you have any networking tips oh, for people yes. who, and, you know, to take advantage of coming oh, to yes. the Wimbis? So one of the um, advantages of attending a Wimbis event is access and, and the opportunity to meet people that you may not ordinarily get to meet. Mm -hmm. So. If you have this window to meet somebody that you've been thinking about meeting for the last 10 years, prepare in advance so that you don't go and then say the wrong thing and, and make the person <laughs> feel you know, at edge. Have your business cards ready, but more than your business cards, have your value proposition ready. What is your value proposition? That is, what is that good or service? What is that product that you have? What is it that you do that is so valuable that the world can't do without you? understand your own self, understand what this thing is, understand your value proposition, and then be prepared to state it in 30 seconds or less. Mm. Why 30 seconds or less? Because people are busy. They also have people they want to meet. Yeah. They also have targets and things like that. So you don't want to unduly take mm. over people's time. What we have found is that if you present value to people, they want to know you and they will start seeking you out mm -hmm. rather than you always being, ah, please give me this, give me that, give me the other. When is the date for this particular conference? What's the time frame? So it starts tomorrow, Thursday, November the 7th, goes on until Friday, November 8th. Can I do a speaker reveal? Can I have permission to <laughs> do a speaker reveal? Oh, you are? You are? You are? You okay, I'm so excited because one of the ladies here yes. um, uh, on this table <laughs> is, um, is part of our lineup this year. Yes. She's taking part in the debate. Mm -hmm. Now, this year's debate sure. is <laughs> Nigeria, <laughs> stay or not leave. Yeah. Mm. The reason we came up with this topic is because every other week, it's, it's as if you hear about somebody else that's moving to Canada, moving to Azerbaijan, moving to Dubai. <laughs> moving, no, I, I kid you not. Whether mm. the person's a driver, uh, the hairdresser, uh, a banker, an IT person, they're moving, moving, moving. It's like, ah, Kilode, why? Why are you going? Where are you? You know, for what reason? So we decided that we would have the debate to examine this topic. What is the reason why so many young professionals and their families are packing up and moving to to countries that are not their, you know, <laughs> their home countries, basically. So, so we that's have... Nina! Yeah. 
that you suggested me. Thank you so much. <laughs> and I'm very prepared. I'm sure you are. I am. I am more busy. Yes. 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 When they meet accomplished women, they feel that this, there's this air around mm. them that they can't approach them. So, does Wimbis make it easier? Because mm -hmm. I remember many years in the early days when Wimbis started, I was one of those young people that just felt, you know what, these people don't want to talk to me. Mm -hmm. But now I've grown myself, I have more confidence. I can go there with a lot of confidence. But then, I was just, I just felt like I was. This was not for me. Mm -hmm. So, what would you say to somebody like that who has invested right. all her money to attend Wimbis and still gets that fear? Yes. Okay. Number one. Everybody that you meet is a human being. Because mm -hmm. then it's a Nobody mm -hmm. has two heads, right? I, well, at least we hope not. <laughs> so, <laughs> so what I'm trying to say is this. Everybody has their own dreams, aspirations, fears, anxieties. Some people are actually really shy. Mm -hmm. They may look confident. They have right. their makeup. They have their hair. But they themselves are shy. They have issues they're dealing with. Right. So don't automatically assume that they don't want to talk to you. Mm -hmm. One of the best pieces of advice um, I got from my friend, Bolan Leoson Peters. I'm not name dropping. She really is my friend. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. She's our but friend she as said well. She is. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> but no, one of the things she said was... Whenever you step into a room, behave as if everybody there loves you. It doesn't mm. matter even if they want to throw stones. Just mm. act as if they love me. Okay. I'm meant to be here. I, wow. yeah, I'm supposed to be here. Right. I belong here. And they need what it. I have. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> Mm. Carry yourself, you know, love yourself, you know, promote yourself to yourself. Right. So mm. wherever you are, it's like President Toy, it doesn't matter. Yeah. You know, you know, yeah. so for those of us that can't afford to go there, can we watch online? Is it gonna be streamed live? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. There's a live stream this year. Um, for people who are maybe out of town, you know, and so on and so forth. You can log on to uh, wimbiz.org to get some details about how to live stream. And the content is available after the conference as oh, well. Oh, that would be great. You can yeah. ask questions on the live stream and so on and so forth. Hear some of the questions read out, get the answers to your questions. Oh, All of the plenaries, including... <laughs> yeah. My friends here. Yeah. So you've done this for, for this 18, is the 18th, 18th one. Year. So yeah. you must feel so proud. Tell us what has the journey been, and how do you feel right now for the? So 18th? so yeah. I um, started attending Wimbus events maybe about eight years ago, mm -hmm. and um, I started volunteering almost immediately because I, I I liked what I saw there, and I saw it as a place where I could grow professionally. So I got plugged in, I started attending the roundtable lunches, and then I started volunteering, and so on and so forth. And then eventually I was appointed to um, the executive council. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I know it from when I have started joining. And what I will say is a testimony that somebody shared with me, actually. She runs a business here in Marwa, um, not too far away from here. She runs a hair salon, and she was losing money, and she couldn't quite understand why she was losing money. She attended one of the workshops on finance, mm -hmm. um, financial management and things like that, financial structure, and she applied what she learned to her next business, which was a, a, a restaurant. She does mm -hmm. one of the best Amalang Begiri um, <laughs> <laughs> in the neighborhood, even if I do say so myself. Um, so she applied what she learned, and she discovered that the mistakes and the leakages that were occurring in the hair salon were not mm -hmm. occurring in the restaurant mm -hmm. because of the structure that she put in. So she told me that she does not joke with Wimby's conference. When it's time for conference, she clears the two days, mm -hmm. and she comes, and she That's focuses wow. fully That's to make genius. sure that whatever she's supposed to learn, she learns it, and she goes back and she and applies. applies it. And this year, she said she's bringing four people from her company so that they can all learn together, yeah. you know, and move up together. Yeah. If I have time, if I may, please, can I just mention the networking breakfast? So a number of people have this issue about networking. And I remember one of the things I was told when I first started coming to Wimbiz was, you have to learn how to network. That in Nigeria, how it works is who you know. So you really have to know how to talk to people. And I was like, oh, I'm shy. I don't want to do it. It's like, well, too bad. Sorry, nothing for you. Mm -hmm. So networking breakfast. We organized this on day one at the beginning before the conference. It's like a pre-conference event. It's a structured, almost like a speed dating thing, but it's speed networking. Mm. So the, the way it's done is you have to practice your elevator pitch and you get a chance to meet between 15, 15 to 20 people that morning within a 30 minute time frame. You know, so a bell goes, you move on to the next person, bell oh, goes, really? move on to the next person, <laughs> bell goes, move on. So the idea is that practice, 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 get to meet people and then 
before conference starts, you've already met Never. a set of people. Mm. You already have some friends and so on and so forth. You get preferential seating because you get to go into conference slightly earlier than everybody else and so on and so forth. So networking breakfast it's is a great Even, opportunity yeah, right. for those who are, who, yeah, if you think you're shy, you can't. Right. I assume that there's still space because like, the room can only take about maybe like 200 people. Right. And as at the last count, we had over 150 people that had already right. you know, registered. Yeah. Unfortunately, that's all we can take. But thank you so much thank for coming you. and we wish you the best this year's conference. Thank you so much for inviting me. Right. <laughs> Up next, um, I'm not sure if we have, um, do we have our caller on phone yet? We're going to go on a break. Okay, okay, let's go on a break. When we come back, we'll continue with the focus of today. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Welcome back to Your View. For the past few weeks, Nima has always come up on the show every single time, talking about uh, her area, Ijegun community, the satellite town. And one of the four things she has always highlighted is the fact that the waste management issues, the road leading there, the, like the Lagos, Badagri Express Road is bad, uh, blocked drainages, and the tank farms that just keep springing up everywhere. So those are the four major things she's always talked about. Both so we have the entire community, many members of the community here on the show with us, joining us to discuss this matter. But before we go into this conversation, we have with us the Honorable Minister of Works and Housing Minister, Baba Tunde Raji Fashola on the phone. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Hello, sir. Are you there? Hello, sir. Good morning. I Good am here. Good. Morning. All right, so I know you have to rush for a meeting. So very quickly, could you give us an update on the work being done on the Lagos Badagri Expressway. Yes, I am here, and uh, let me. Hello. Hello, sir. Uh -oh. I hope we haven't lost that call. If you can hear me. Okay, we can hear you now. Good morning. Um, let me say first that I, I must commend you ladies for the great work you are uh, undertaking there and bringing um, the plight of people across Nigeria, and particularly this Agus, to the foreground. We are also aware in government. So and let me apologize to the people of that area for the inconvenience they are currently undertaking and say very categorically that... Uh, things will get better. And I say that because something has changed. For the first time in decades, the entire stretch of that road has now been contracted out. So that, that was not the case before. Now, the process to contracting, execution, and completion will take some time. We also need resources. You have had government saying that it's looking for money, so all of it. But we have contractors on all sections. Now, let me break down the sections. There's a section from Eric Moore to Kukumaiko, which was the one I undertook when I was governor. We completed it up to Festac, and my successor, I believe, continued. Now, there's a section from Kukumaiku to Agbara. That is the very bad part. That's about nine kilometers. FEMA has brought a proposal for rehabilitation to the Federal Executive Council, which was approved shortly before the end of the first term of President Buhari. The last section, which is from Agbara to Semeboda, is about 44 kilometers. We also have a contractor there. So federal government is doing Agbara to Badagri, Okokomaiko to Agbara, and Lagos state government is in charge of Eric Moore to Okokomaiko. Okay. All right. Now, that said, let me provide some context. This road was opened around 1974-75. At that time, there was no... Uh, all the population you have there now wasn't there. Mm -hmm. 
So you have full town now, first tax built, and people living there. You have a university fully built, people living there. Okay. You have a trade fair that used to open once a year. Now it's a daily shopping center. You have so many things that have been built there. So that was what necessitated the decision to expand it from two lane dual carriage to ten lane. Okay. Let me pause you for a quick second, sir. Go ahead. Okay, now. so thank you, sir, for usually so accommodating my I calls think on that the road. What needs to be done now is uh, to appeal to people to be patient with government to execute this work. All right, let me pause Building you for a quick second, sir. I want, to, I, want I want to get in one question. Just one second, one, one question. question. So the contractors in charge of that road are presently working on the service lane on both sides now. Actually, the service lane turning from the trade fair. But as we speak, when they are working, they just block off and cut off the community, that satellite town community entirely. So when you're driving through, you have to get all the way down to turn. And that's another bad road. So if you don't know the alternative roads in, in, within communities and out, you can't get home. You have to do it one way from Alakija to get into satellite town. As we speak, on the service lane, are the contractors not aware of you know, the structures of the road? Or is there someone not, are the, uh, is government not supervising what they're doing so that the alternatives are created as long, uh, as, long as they're working? You see. Yes. Go ahead, sir. Hello, sir. Are you, you there? See, yes, I'm Go, here. Go ahead, sir. Let me again say that there is always room for improvement about how things are done. What I can identify here is the need for better traffic management. The responsibility of the contractor essentially is to build and as much as possible provide signages and diversions. How best those work are matters of the knowledge of the local traffic management authority, where to divert to and which place to divert to. And I think the community development associations and also can and should engage with the contractor. But what I undertake to do today is to speak to the uh, core marshal of the Federal Road Safety right. Commission to liaise with last my legal yeah. state and the contractor Very and important. see how best this diversion okay. can be undertaken. I have, to let you, I have to let you go, but let me just throw in one last one. The community members are here, Minister. Can you give us a timeline? Yeah. Where do we expect that this road will be completed leading to Badagri? I this think the this entire road works should not exceed 24 months. That does not mean it is after 24 two months. Years, two, years. <coughs> two years. I think the entire timeline should be about 24 months, but that does not mean it's only after 24 months that you will see relief. As certain sections are completed, they will be open for use. I am aware now that between Agbara and Badagri, 12 kilometers of it, have been laid with uh, earthworks and laterite. Mm -hmm. And once the dry weather starts, they will start surfacing that part. Mm -hmm. If that part is finished, it will be opened up, right. and so on and so forth. Of course, these are subject to the availability mm -hmm. of funding. Right. The contractor already is uh, asking that he should be paid for some of the works he's done, so we're trying to mobilize resources to okay. the contractor. All Please right. bear with us. All right, I'll let you go at this time, Minister. Thank you very Thank much you, for joining Thank us you. on the show, Minister Fashola. It's always a pleasure having you. Now, coming back Thank to... Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, sir. Now, obviously, so that's concerning the roads. Now, yeah. going to other issues. Um, I know Nima has said issues of waste management, mm -hmm. uh, blocked the drainages, and the, tank the, the terminals, the blocked Bonded terminals, terminals, and also the fact that the, we have um, um, the tank farms. Mm -hmm. Now, we try to get DPR, Unfortunately, they did not accept our invitation. Mm -hmm. We really wanted them to be on this show. We reached out to the, um, the Commissioner for Environment and is asked that his pump sec for uh, drainage, uh, the engineer in charge of drainage, um, um, should actually be here, and he's going to be here very soon, to discuss all the issues. He also asked us to speak with the MD of Loma, who we've called since yesterday. Um, I sent him a message also. The producer also tried to reach him. He hasn't responded. So at least we have one person in the studio who can respond to the issues on waste management and blocked drainages. But let's talk about what your plight as regards um, the, the, the terminals, mm -hmm. the blocked terminals. Let's, let's start with that. Uh, thank you very much, uh, viewers. And uh, it's a great opportunity. Okay, I, I forgot to introduce you. Yeah. You're <laughs> Chairman Satellite Town Forum yeah. Governor uh, Imitini, Imitini yeah. and the Vice Chairman Satellite Town Forum, Mr. Navy Captain Bayo Adekoya. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank Sorry you. about that. Yeah. Thank, you. To thank you. Properly. Invite them. All right, 
So, go ahead, sir. Yeah, uh, thank you very much. The issue of the drainage yes. that you just rightly said, I want to tell you frantically that uh, Satellite Town has no drainage system at all. Okay. It has not, because all drainage in Satellite Towns are being handled by individuals. I, that is the area that the uh, Lagos State Ministry of Environment should have come in to look at it and see, because the town planning itself within a satellite town, I can say is horrible. Mm. The fact is that the proper planning is not there. And then we are close to the sea. That would have even made it more, uh, more, more cheaper and easiest way of diverting the flood and the rainwater to the lagoon. But this is not, it's absence of that. We don't have it at all. And the little one we manage to do ourselves, it is being blocked by tank farms. Mm -hmm. As I'm talking to you now, people are wearing rain boots in their homes, in their room, bedroom, the kitchen is as bad as that. Mm -hmm. We have the, the, the visual flooded. of it. The whole place is flooded because there is no proper drainage. Mm -hmm. And which, not that no proper drainage per se by our own individual effort, but the tank farm is, sit, is seated on the water uh -huh. channels. Mm -hmm. so the, the chairman of the tank farm owners has said that um, he's been engaging, they have been engaging with the community mm. actively since they started operations there. Yeah. So you telling me now that there is no drainage, what has their engagements yeah. offered you people? They have not. Let us be, I'm saying it loud and clear <coughs> to the Nigeria as a whole, that the tank farm has not done anything. They have not improved the, 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 the community in any form. In terms of the drainage we are talking about now, the only drainage they did is within the tank farm itself mm. to service them, whereby the community is blocked off. Mm. So the water coming from, from Finanja, if you may know the area mm. very well, yes. down to Ijegu, then before it gets to some of those estates there. As I'm talking to you, particularly let me mention NNPC, NIG, and, and uh, NPF is fully flooded as I'm talking to you now. You so, understand what I'm saying? So they have not done anything. And the worst part of it is that from Stepping Stone down to where they call uh, 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 Holy Family mm -hmm. Hospital, there is a, a, a drainage system a that would have been an open course. drainage system, mm -hmm. okay? But they went and used uh, rings. Hmm. Nigeria is not up advanced to that. It is in UK, I can know that maybe in the Western world that developed country that they can use. In Nigeria where you throw pure water, throw uh, all sort of things and nobody cares about that, okay? Now that one is blocked. No matter how you clear it, it can never be opened. Right, so this is a so residential a area a by establishment when yes. the government established the towns, the yes. satellite towns and the communities around it, it was supposed to be a total residential area. Absolutely. As we speak now, the DPR is licensing yeah. all these operations. Yeah. Also, there's, there's springing up of um, bonded terminals for containers for clearing as, that's under the MPA, yes. everywhere around that corridor. Yes. How exactly have you tried to meet government to, you know, to, to discuss this commercialization of a total residential area without putting amelioration or, or pre prerequisites in place? Because certain facilities should, be, to, should come before yeah. that I'll commercialization. I'll take a response to that question after this quick break. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Welcome back to Your View. Thank you for staying with us. All right, so before the break, you may ask the question which you're going to respond to. Mm -hmm. Yes, go ahead, sir. Uh, the question of maybe DPR have been issuing lances. I think that's the question you yes. asked. Um, Keep and Keep the on, terminals as well. And the terminal as well. In the aspect of um, DPR, we've made a lot of um, contact with them. We've written letters, correspondence. We've met them on one-on-one -on -one in the office, at least to discuss the issue of putting a stoppage to more tank farms it's in satellite town, mm -hmm. uh, pre uh, precisely. And just last week, we went and did a, 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 a protest there mm -hmm. over the issue of expansion. This time around, this, we have about uh, uh, 13 marketing companies already there. And uh, there are two that we've just uh, they want to issue a license to again, uh, Northwest Nigeria, Northwest uh, Nigeria Petroleum, and then a YTK, which they said 
I have to be sincere with you. DPR has confirmed that to us that they will never issue such a license because the place is already choked up. Okay. Okay? Mm -hmm. And then the problem we are having again is this, that the existing ones that are already there, the existing ones, they are expanding. Mm -hmm. Why are they still expanding? Mm -hmm. And if you look at it, assume this is the... the what the, does expansion the, mean? For those of you that have no so, idea. Expanding. That is building farms, more. More tank farms. They want to build farms, more tank farms. So you have they, more the tank tankers. Farm is, yes, they will now have more tankers. As I'm talking to you now, presently we are having over 500 trucks that Perhaps. comes into that place a That's daily, a daily basis. Mm -hmm. on a daily basis. And when they come, they come in bumper to bumper. So the issue of fire upgrade, the danger which I want to express is this, hmm. which we are calling for the federal government and the state to relocate them. Because we cannot co 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 uh, coexist with okay. this kind of uh, 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 business that so they are doing. Have... It's highly in inflammable. Okay, why on the on the 22nd of last month, a tanker failed between Finanja and Dantata? Yes. I think I sent it to, uh, to DPRO as well, and they are aware of it. In event of that, on the 24th, another one failed in front of uh, uh, satellite town secondary, secondary school, school. Oh, God. and the students were asked to go immediately to go home to go home and the following day because the vapor and the this thing of the, the smell and everything the order is still there they the school did not resume hmm. i was on ground throughout that morning hour till 5 p.m okay, so, so I, have a, yeah, I have a question then you i'm coming please yeah. let me just say this while we are talking of that, and you know the, the road to the tank farm is very narrow. No, no, no. no, no. Okay? That can easily, it can't accommodate two tanker. If it, if, if it does, definitely there is a small path left for other road users, which is not possible. While we are talking on that, there is a container terminal Terminals. that is coming up. A new one. A new one coming up. Okay. New in ones. a built up residential area. Yeah. Liverpool Zone 2 by Jackie's Nigeria Limited is coming up. And we have written to the uh, people are saying that, look, you people are not talking. We've talked now. All government agencies, we've written to, uh, uh, to uh, Lagos State Minister of Environment. We've written to Chippers Council. We've written to NPA. Even NPA were not allowed to enter when we went to did our protest there. That we cannot enter. We cannot demonstrate. What we told them is our right. We can't. We have the right to demonstrate. Okay. 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 So we should. They should relocate. Clarion, bonded warehouse in Alakija, hmm. Abroshu, uh, container terminal, the new one that they are just setting up there. If you hmm. just go and view that place, they've stacked already up to how many uh, uh, height of uh, container? Okay, let me give a So, so clearly, they, it seems that nobody really cares about the human beings that live here. Yeah, but, I, but you know, know, I have, yeah. I know some people that work with DPR and I've asked questions. I've asked if they go and do inspections and they say they do inspections and they also revoke licenses if they see that you have breached, you know, the, the, plan, the plan, yes. Okay. So do you see, the, do, does DPR come to that area to hmm. do these inspections? Do okay. you see them do these inspections? Nonsense. Okay, let uh, my advice. Let me say this. Uh, this is a good opportunity, and we are very grateful to you. Let's start with DPR. DPR is ultimately complicit in all the transgressions that is going on in that satellite environment. In fact. One, there is the relation of duty. Two, there is serious sense of insensitivity mm -hmm. to human beings that live in that environment. And why I want you to please listen to this now is that a papa, where they used to use, even if they don't use it now or in there, the situation that they have seen and reached the there was even after they have done the environmental impact assessment mm -hmm. and they got to that very ignoble situation. <coughs> what is the evidence that satellite time will not go worse mm. than you have had? What is the evidence that it will not be replicated in satellite town? We are perpetually vulnerable. The human beings that are living there are carcasses of themselves. They cannot sleep. They cannot rest. The tankers you are talking about, within the space of five days, three different tankers are falling on different venues. Now, you are talking of collaboration. The one that happened in Nisha was one tanker. One. One. Now you have, you have had, not imagining, 
city within a space of five days in a highly populated environment. Yes. Leave the level of vulnerability. Are you considering the magnitude of the consequences? If this were to happen, there will be fatalities, there will be mortalities. Mm. Is it then that the people and government will not be running around, mm. -skater, mm. doing mm. what? Measures. Preventing loss of life that will have been prevented earlier. We are there with sanity in the environment. Wow. <laughs> the Fella said, sovereign and smiling. I want to tell you that we are not only suffering, we cannot smile. Mm. Because the transgressions we are going through is unbearable. <sighs> Let me tell you about the environmental hazard that have been perpetrated by this catastrophic thing they came up with. In my estate, Finagia estate, the next building to me, they by 2.30 a.m. after the NNPC tanker had fallen in front of a secondary school that students were not able to, the odor there permeated with emitting very offensive yes. odor. Mm -hmm making that place inhabitable. Yes. And yet you are supposed to be an habitable environment. It is not congenial, it is not conducive. People are living as if they are dead. It is not supposed to be. No. And that is why we need to appeal to the conscience of people at all strata of governance. That human beings are meant to live in satellite town, not dead bodies. Mm. Mm. Sir, how many not dead bodies. How many I don't want us to just lament. Yes. yes it's important that, yes, because Nima talks about this every single day. So we know of these issues. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the reasons why we wanted to do the show is so that we can have um, uh, people who are in charge to come and give us feedback. So we have somebody in our, in our midst. He's okay. an engineer, shouldn't he? He's actually the perm sec for drainage services. I'd like to bring him, on, bring him on the show after a quick break. Let him tell us what he's doing concerning issues, because yeah, there's no drainage. Issues there's of no drainage. Let you him come and discuss, tell us that. After yeah, that, Itaku. we'll now go back to the issue of DPR. Let's go on a quick break. Okay. Okay. Itaku, go. Okay. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Welcome back to Your View. Is the permanent secretary, drainage and water resources, Lagos State engineer Ola Lagos Shudendi? Welcome to the show, sir. Good morning. Thank so you. you heard earlier that they said there are absolutely no drainage uh, available. There's no dra there's no proper drainage available in the satellite town area. Is that correct? That is well. Uh, let me quickly clear something. There are various classes of drainages, and my office is responsible for just two classes. One is a primary channel which is the main channel that takes most of the runoff from the community. The other is what we call the secondary collectors, the, you know, the intermediary between the drains in front of, your ten of the tenements and the primary ones. Those are secondary These are big channels that take runoff across channels. We don't do street drains. Okay. That is a purview of the local government by the street drains. So I need to clear that. Mm -hmm. So when, the, I think the chairman, right? Yeah, when the chairman, the chairman was sir. talking, he said there is one Actually, he first said there is none. Then I said there is one that is a conduit. We call it because a conduit is a drain that is underground. It's, it's a very perfect system. Because if you have to do a drain that is so deep, about four or five meters, you can't make it open. Okay. That's going to cost a fortune. Right. So, I mean, what you need is just a volume of maybe one by one or two by one. We have to have a volume of maybe like six meters deep. So you can't do a wall of six meters because you want to allow people to dump refuse, because that encourages refuse. Okay. I mean, the best system for Lagos today is to have covered drains. Okay. Because yes, I mean, if you're an engineer, ask any engineer, they will tell you. Because a drain is supposed to carry water and silt. It's supposed to be a suspension. And if this is what you allow to flow in the drain, there will be no blockage. Mm. Now, this particular channel that we talked about, I mean, it's been a running battle between mm. the uh, residents and the government. Right. We have always, you know, explained that mm. there is no how this drain can be opened. Right. Because it's coming from NFI, mm. there's a low line area. Is that what you're asking for, an open drainage, sir? Yeah, mm -hmm. an open drainage. Is that what you're asking for, open drainage? Yes. Yeah, yeah, That's what they say. Okay. That because we provided a closed drain, they're not happy. 
No. Want it to be open. No. 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 Why, no, no, not no, being no, happy. No, Did no, you no, take no, into no, 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 no. the activities happening on that area? Because we were saying, to explaining to you that tankers now ply a one-lane road, and of course they will climb on a covered drain. So you might have it blocked from within because, Sir, of course, Madam, infrastructure is depleting. Me, excuse me. That's what the it's saying. The drain will do its me. work irrespective of what happens on top of it. Okay. What goes on top of a drain, I don't. Is not. But mine is for the drain to be effective. Right. There's low-lying area upstream. Okay. There, there's a catchment we're targeting. And from the upstream to the most downstream, it will collect runoff as it goes. If this drain is there, whatever you do on top, we, we have, road, I mean, drains that flow on the roads. Right. Right. Not just, okay, I mean, so, so my question these are will possibilities. Be, okay. This is engineering okay. correct. All right, okay. So the so, only thing I want to add, which I agree to, is that yes, the drain is blocked. Not blocked because of its naturally designed process. Okay. Because people in the community okay. open the channel and dump oh, refuse. refuse. We have okay. been there over and over. We've picked out sacks of refuse, tires, mm. that ordinarily wouldn't enter a channel if not purposely dropped in. Dropped okay. into it. Right. So, you know, it takes two hands to make a clap. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Government has provided infrastructure as inadequate as it is. Yes. It might not be all over, but there is one. Okay, okay, so I just want to know what the original, I mean, okay. what, may I ask what the original intent for that drainage is? What would it, what exactly would it have solved? Mm -hmm. What I, exact... Uh, I told you, there is a, an area upstream, NFI, it's so, part of Satellite Town. Yes. You see, we target our channels to catchments. Mm. We don't do road drains that will pass in front so of your I house and my house. Excuse me, let me... So there is an area, a catchment. Mm -hmm. So this drainage will serve you've that have, catchment okay, and yourself. all the way downstream to the final discharge point. And you okay. don't collaborate okay. with the so local And there are inlets. You know, we do have to flow into a drain from the top. Mm -hmm. There are inlets. Okay, look, think of Ikorodu Road. Mm -hmm. Think of Van Cantoni. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. These are roads that were constructed old, old. I mean, years ago, not by me, before right. I was a, when I was a, a little boy. Yeah. They're all conduits. They're barrels. Right. Okay. They're still existing. Right. Because right. people won't go there to yeah. dump. Okay. But Very the point to challenge a drain, yeah. mm -hmm. it becomes Very ineffective. Possible. I know that the people that are involved in this, what is it? Yeah, mm -hmm. I'll come to so you, man. Let me go, go, go ahead, sir. Pertaining to that uh, drainage issue, the closed screen drainage, I can say authoritatively that when that drainage was, in cons uh, was constructed. constructed, I was on ground. It was a uh, 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 fasciola regime that yeah. approved that drainage. And what was a master print of that drainage? A very short drainage in need. Yes. It was open drainage. Good. Open drainage. That is it. We even went to National Assembly to contest that drainage. As they were doing that drainage, when they, we complained, engineer Gumbambi said it will work. The first train after that construction, the team disappointed the whole uh, satellite town. Mm. Engineer Ajadi <coughs> was the site engineer. Yeah. He came. The whole satellite town almost lynched him because of that drainage. It didn't work. That drainage did not. That's the open one. Open no, one. No, the no, closed no, one. The closed one. Close one we are contesting. And they've sent different representatives from Lagos State Ministry of Environment mm. to do findings. Even local government chairman can even attest to it. Mm. That local government uh, drainage should be converted to open drainage. That can that will be what can relieve most estate closes on that as is okay. open drainage. Yeah. So that was the what my my follow-up question was going to you be. See, if the drainage is not working, mm. it's not because it's the wrong infrastructure. It's because there are things being put into drain. That is the, oh, sorry, we don't go back. I disagree. Because the issue is that, excuse me, the issue is this, the issue is this. The other side of Oriade LCD is an open drainage. Why are you, the, the left-hand side becomes a conduit to drainage? Right. Hello, that is I the told issue. you that there's Wait, 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 please, okay? See, engineer, let me, that is your discipline. I am not an engineer, but mere, I have native knowledge. Okay? And you live there. And I live there of whatever drain is all about. Right. It doesn't, does it, I don't need to have to go to, okay, to the university. I'm coming sir. to go and study engineering oh, before they decide. They, that place, what we are telling you, that can solve that situation, the terrain different. Okay, we, Paul, we heard they, you. We heard you. I need you to pause for a second. We heard you. Yeah. Open drainage, according to you, works for works your community. Yes. Yes. yes! Let us understand so where the government is coming from. Yeah. Let me be clear. Yes. Go ahead, sir. So they now, are saying that's what they want. You say me. otherwise. Water, so does, us... water does not flow up. Okay. Water flows down. Yes. Water can only rise up. Right. Now, you have a community that has 
diff, you know, varying topography. Yeah. We have flooding in the NFI area. There's a community called NFI in the community. Mm -hmm. That is low lying than, okay, let's say the, the community is here, the drain has to flow this way. This place is like a hill. Mm -hmm. If you have to do an open drain, at some point, we need to dig more like six meters. That is uneconomical. Okay. It can't be done. So when you do your levels, from where you're taking the water to the downstream, you need a straight line gradient okay. for mm -hmm. it to have energy to flow. Yes. Right? Yes. So water won't go up and down. Because right. if the water has to, if it has to be opened, for us to achieve that flow, we are, at some point along the alignment, we'll go Deep six, deeper. seven meters. So we're not OK, let's do the barrel, the closed drain. At least it's cheaper. We need a two by one. Let's just take underground and we'll discharge. So that this community is being served. Because mm. if, if we are serving this community midstream, we could do open drain. Mm. Okay. That is the truth. Right. But because the tech community is this area, it has to be a conduit drain. Because you right. design your infrastructure, okay. not for, a, I'm coming please. You know, along the line, when this drain is going, there will be inlets mm. we can. that will go into it. Right. You see, don't let's just rubbish technology. Let's imbibe it. Let's make it work. You see, storm does not me, work. If flood does not work, work you, you have to rubbish it. Chairman, excuse me. If I miss that was like you said. Chairman, because the excuse, issue me, excuse, excuse me, excuse yeah, me, excuse me, excuse, excuse me, excuse, excuse me. me. Excuse me. Let's right. learn. Yeah. Every yes. day, let's learn. Yeah. We are learning. Now, I quickly ask. Excuse me, excuse me. When, when there's flooding, mm. you don't stop it. Mm. You manage it. They call yes. it storm water management. Yes. Flood control. Yes. You don't just provide infrastructure and a magic will happen. Mm -hmm. You have to control and your lifestyle affects it. Right. Okay. So let people in satellite stop dumping that, refuse. That's very important. Statement that of is that's that's challenge that's government. That's 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 challenge government. Okay, point, point, point. Let me, one second, one second, one second. One second. One second. And let me have a post, sir. I, I Sign it. Let me, go ahead, one second, sir. One second, let me let Lima jump in here. So, you are very correct that we, must live, uh -huh. our lifestyle must also support government. Right. Absolutely. But then again, government cannot fail first and expect lifestyle to just support. Mm -hmm. So how your job is as a state to build the conduit, as you explained, you're not in charge of the inlet. Mm -hmm. How do you collaborate with the local government and make sure that what they need to do is done? Number two, what they need to do as a town planning mm -hmm. uh, department or whatever town planning has to do within your state government is done as well. Because this problem that you're saying is beyond human. These community members that you're seeing here, I can t testify to you, will come out every time it rains to clear the drainages. God bless you. They will clear the drainages and look, they have seen it done. It's done over and over, and then you have flooding. As we speak, what is beyond them is what is happening there. The, com the commercialization in that area makes tank uh, tankers drive over drainages, collapse b infrastructure, and then we have to s deal with that as well. You can't sit here comfortably and tell us that we are ignoring technology when you have not even done provided infrastructure in the first place. <laughs> Yes, sir, go ahead. I like, no, one Thank second, you sir. Let me Thank you for that. When you talk of synergy, governance has three chairs. Okay. Right? We're talking about my tier of government now. Mm. Yes, there's collaboration. I'm sure any road mm -hmm. constructed would have a drain. Mm. Government won't construct a road without a tertiary drain. Right. Right? As, as I'm talking to you now, because of this tank, uh, tank farm, I don't know, I can't talk for DPR. Right. I can't talk for physical planning. I don't know how the approvals are, approvals are given. Uh, but I can tell nice you for a could. fact that mm. there is a committee that is sitting in legacy government right. thinking about the problem within our purview. I mean, right. how can we best you know, relate with this? The Marwa road that leads to the tank farm mm -hmm. is being proposed to be upgraded. Most of the internal roads within the community is being proposed to be upgraded. So it's a work in progress. Okay. And all these things, like the government is not taking over even more. I mean, the government is not taking over some local government responsibilities mm. to make sure that the satellite okay. people so, sir, have some. I, I, I think the problem we are seeing here is more than just having the infrastructure in gr on yeah. ground. Um, is who is in charge of maintaining this infrastructure? We have a problem of maintenance. You can't just keep something there and you're not coming to see how it's working, okay. if it's effective, okay. if you. it's serving the community. Who handles okay. that bit? Gov you see, government ought to maintain. But ought to maintain, yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I use my words carefully. <laughs> I choose my words carefully. Ought to maintain. And we are responsive to that, highly diligent about that. But when people intentionally 
Yeah, I will say this because it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a way of life. Uh, this is I'm not about starting life. I'm talking generally now. Okay, except uh, I'm talking one generally because I will not take that. Chairman, from chairman, you. please. I'm not being personal. I'm not being personal. I'm not being personal. I'm not being personal. Okay. Look at channels. Let's talk generally. Look at Lagos as a whole. Yeah. Tell me which drain hasn't got refuse. Almost all. Oh! Yeah. So it's not about past satellite town. It's I'm being generic yeah. now, please. Yeah. So please, if I offend you, no, 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 no. pardon yeah, it's me. Not, I don't not, mean to. I'm oh, sorry. We are, <laughs> I mean, it's just yeah. where we find See, ourselves. So we need to fight for the if, uh, welfare of our people. We designed the channels for water and silt. Mm. Yeah. When we talk about maintenance, we say desilting. Desilting, yeah. That is the common word we see. We're not okay. defusing yes. mm. or the garbage. In, I mean, no. if it's correct okay. English. Yeah. But what we're doing now is basically garbage cleaning in the channels. Right. Mm. And government has got that deep pocket to just keep coming back to clean. To we clean. also have to take responsibility on our own part. Yeah. That's sure. because we don't if the, the PSP is allowed to work, mm. pay your PSP for your solid waste. Mm. Sustenance so requires that people pay for services rendered. Yes. Then the channels will work effectively. Okay. And this, because a channel has one thing. We call it self-cleansing velocity. Oh. Because, when, I mean, I said it, water needs water. energy. Okay, energy. Okay, energy. Once the water have, is flowing, the segments will flow let me, out. Let me take this comment from our audience. Go ahead, sir. Please, I thank all of you for, for this subject, and uh, uh, the most particularly the TVC for this audience they are giving us. I, one is that uh, the drainage that we are talking about, somebody has talked about the, the serviceability, the servicing, the maintenance, because that is actually where the problem is. Yes. It's not just enough to install a technology. Exactly, it's, I agree with it, you. It behoves on the ownership to yeah. also maintain. And people, the residents of Satellite Town are also maintaining, the, maintaining all these things. Let me even assure you, as I have, I, I have said several that, look, if you pick even a grain of sand in Satellite Town, it was dropped there by, by an individual, not by government. It's, it, and that, that's the basic truth. Okay. Now, right. besides that point, so yeah, because we are talking of a drainage, uh, the one that is up, upland, the, uh, then the, the down, downside, there is no, absolutely no drainage. No drainage. You talk of no the deserting. The, 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 the Mara Road the drainage is, is not deserted. Okay. All year round. If you yeah. go there now, water runs on surface. Okay. Now, right, uh, uh, right inside, right inside on a, on a Pioneer Road, Pioneer Road, that where the the the, the, these, town, uh, the town farms say they are doing a road for themselves, they have they, they do a drainage that is up, not down, and uh, thereby cutting off the the the, 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 the community. I said it. I and said it I, and I don't know I don't know what there should be an authority that is supervising all these things. Mm. You don't just allow private okay. establishments to be doing what they want, to, they do want to do and what they wish right. to do, Point and thereby sir. punishing the people. Right. The residents. Okay. I, I, have, I, have, I have very few one second, one second. I have I have I have very few long sir thank you very much let me just take long last comment from the yeah, audience. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Yes, the point is that the engineer should know that this community has engaged your predecessors for so many years. Mm -hmm. We've taken many of your engineers to the site where they, we've shown you the devastation, the problems that are in that community. For so many years, the various tiers of government have ignored the community. Satellite, nothing is going on there. That's, That's the truth of the matter. We have several meetings. We've had pictures, video. Uh, pictures uh, 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 that we've sent to your offices telling you the problems we're having. V virtually every estate, virtually every road okay. is waterlogged. Anytime okay. it rained. Mm. And we've pointed these things to you, and you guys have ignored us All right, point several ahead. times. So we have very few minutes, and I'd like you, I'd like you to end. No. So now that you've heard everybody, tell this community what, what you're, you're doing, doing to make their lives better. Okay. Yeah. On the, on the long run, I said, on the long run, there's, there's a study, there is a committee packaging a, pro, a proposal to tackle the issue of the road, the drainage, and you know, uh, safety, fire response mm -hmm. to whatever, whatever. But looking at the entire picture, mm -hmm. approval and everything, that's going forward. But in the immediate instance, every channel we have, we have other channels that are primary channels, not gutters that people will see. I promise you, as I'm living here, yeah. even before I got here, they were, they were proposed, I mean, government, have, all year round maintains channels. Unfortunately, my daughter, I've gotten to, uh, what was it called, Satellite Town. But this particular conduit is always very critical to us. And I can assure you, I'll, work, I'll talk work with the chairman. We will take videos when we're walking. 
Okay. Whatever we evacuate, we will all see. No we'll problem. Follow up. You understand? But we will work. I can give you in the next one week, we will be in Saturday. Beautiful. We are going to hold you. I like that handshake. I hope the camera is getting that handshake. handshake. So we are going to need this handshake to be on camera. <laughs> okay? So we are going to hold you, Engineer Shoda Inde. So we are holding Engineer Shoda Inde to ensure, and please, thank God you have Nima. The moment you see that work is being ongoing, let, let Nima know so that she communicates to us. If it's not happening, we'll come back happen. to him. It will happen. And we'll hold him again. It will happen. <laughs> We have to round up. Thank you so much, sir, you, for coming. Man. You don't do now, guys. I wonder. I mean, <laughs> you can, can release. No, no, you check. You check later. Don't worry. You check. Okay. What's the evidence? Don't worry. You'll be all right. Thank you so much, sir, for coming. Thank you very much. It was, thank you so much. I hope we've been able to communicate. Okay, Were we able to communicate your plight to the government? Wait, wait, are you comfortable? At least we did something to help you. Now we hope that the government did respond. Yeah. Thank you very much for coming. Us. We'll see you again tomorrow. Have a fabulous day. Bye bye.